Another amazing place to catch snook is seawalls. So what snook like to do is they like to herd the fish, just like you watch lions or something or whatever on, on TV in the Serengeti Plain. They like to push them a certain way and kind of get them trapped and then they go in there and attack them. Snook are the same way. That's what's so great. When they have a vertical wall like this and they have all, this, uh, all these prey items, mullet, you know, sardines, minnows, whatever's coming by there, they really like to push them up against that wall and kind of trap them. And then you'll see a feeding frenzy. If you've never seen a snook feeding frenzy, it's the neatest thing. There might be 30 snook there along one seawall, just pop, 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 pop. And they do it all at once, right, when it comes through there. It's super cool to see. And also super cool to catch them all. When you pitch your bait right in the middle of a feeding frenzy, you could probably throw a piece of spinach in there and they'd bite it at that point because they're so turned on. But uh, seawalls are a great place and because it, it is, like I said, it's, I call it a snook gauntlet because they got to run this gauntlet, these poor guys. So the wall's here so they can't go any further th th you know, this way and the snook are waiting here to push them up against that wall and they got to go through there and, and it is a great place to fish. So I'm going to go and show you how to fish it. All right, we all know what a seawall is. This lucky guy right here, he's got his little peninsula. He's got water on this side. He's got water on this side. And uh, wow, what a great place to live. That's a lucky guy right there. But anyways, all right. So we're, we got this tide coming by this guy's lucky house right here. Tide's heading this way. And that tide is going to bring all this bait, all this bait coming through here. So here's a, here's a point where these snook might just be laying low right in the deeper water, right in front of this seawall, just waiting for things to come by because that's just a solid vertical wall they're dealing with there. So they want their prey items to come through and they just want to trap them up against that wall and hit them. So if this has a great flow and there's a lot of uh, life coming through here, a lot of shrimp are, are going with the tide and baby fish or maybe there's schools of mullet or sardines or greenies or minnows or whatever it is, these snook are going to be holed up this whole way, just waiting. You know, as these fish think they're good around the corner, bam, you got all these guys sitting there just waiting to pounce on them. So again, you're drifting your live bait. If you're over here, you're drifting your bait to them, drifting your bait to them. Could be on a bobber, could be free line, whatever it is. Or if you're casting lures, you're casting this way, you're casting up current, and bringing it right by these all these snook that are staged up here waiting for some unsuspecting mullet or whatever to make a mistake so they can eat it they can trap them up against that seawall and here's the snook gauntlet i was talking about so all these little green guys those are those are going to be whatever your bait fish are and they're they're stuck they can't go any further this way and these snook know it so they'll be snook 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 just waiting for something to come through there because then they got them pinned. They can only jump out of the water. It's the only place they can go. So these snook will just sit there and just wait and wait and wait. And as soon as they get a, a mullet or say there's a school of 50 mullet come through there, boom, you might see this amazing frenzy. And then might be an hour before another school comes by. These snook don't care. They'll just come and sit back down there and digest a little bit and wait for the next round. So when they have a great ambush spot like this, a lot of times they'll hang out there. You know, if there's not a shark or a porpoise or something that comes and scares them away, they might just hang out there if it's a good spot and the water temperature's right and all the things that they like are right. So you, you really, really want to, if you ever pass a, a seawall, you'll want to pitch a bait to it. Always. Just like anytime you pass a, a dock, you got to pitch, pitch a bait or two up in there. You know, I'm not saying spend all day there. But, you know, pitch your bait. So if you're fishing lures, you know, throw, throw this kind of lure for five or six casts. Then throw this color lure. You know, try topwater. Try medium depth. Try a little bit lower. You know, pitch at this thing a few times because it's such a great spot. These seawalls really are a great ambush point for these predators. So they're worth pitching a bait or two up to. Especially this, guys. I love this situation when there's some sort of peninsula. Some sort of peninsula where the water can just like wrap around it. It can come from whatever direction it's coming. Snook love that. Especially if this guy's seawall has some reinforcements. Like say there's some rocks or something at the base of it too. You know, 
That is such a good scenario to find snook. Those things often pile up right there. And a the great thing about something like this, these guys always, almost, almost always have lights on it. So come back at night. So say the bite wouldn't happen during the day, come back at night. I bet that thing you would just be full of snook. So what a great, great place to catch snook is going to be some a situation like this. You want to catch a lot of snook, you got to fish the seawall. Seawalls are great. Doesn't matter where they are. Could be buying in, could be by some guy's house, could be just some weird something or rather like a breakwater thing that they have. These fish love to pressure bait into a corner. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get in there because it's a lot easier. You know, people don't realize how athletic a mullet is, for instance. It's really hard for these snook to catch them. Snook are athletic, but it's amazing how many times they miss. That's one of the reasons I like fishing with a bobber a lot. Because just a free line snook, they'll get away from that. I mean, a free line mullet will get away from that snook a lot. Whereas if you got him tail hooked and he's pulling a bobber, it's a lot easier for that snook to get him. That's how I catch my tarp and that's how I catch a lot of my fish is with a bobber. Not really for any reason, like I, I don't want to keep it, I just want to slow it down more so it's easier. Because nothing's more frustrating to me when this perfect huge snook misses your bait. Goes after you again, misses again, misses again. This mullet can be jumping and moving or whatever and you don't catch him. And you know, if you're like me, that bums you out. So that's why one of the reasons why I fish bobbers a lot when I'm using uh, when I'm using live bait. But anyways, we're gonna talk about that later. You gotta fish seawalls. If you see a seawall, you happen to be there. I don't care if you're wading in a boat, uh, if it's if it's somewhere you can cast to from land. Any way you can work a seawall, work that seawall. Great place to catch fish, uh, all fish. But we're talking about snook. But there might be reds there. There might be all kinds of fish waiting to ambush. Uh, whatever comes around there. So a seawall is just a great place to catch fish, especially snook. Till next time.